Good afternoon. The outcome of the Bloody Sunday inquiry, the longest and most expensive public inquiry in UK legal history, is due to be published this afternoon. Thirteen people were shot and killed in 1972 when British soldiers opened fire on civil rights marches in Londonderry. Fourteen others were wounded, one of whom later died. Our correspondent, Chris Buckler, is in Londonderry now. Chris. Apologies, so we don't seem to be uh, have a contact there with uh, Chris Buckler, but let's go straight to Mark Simpson's report. For 38 years, the same question has been asked about Bloody Sunday. Why did it happen? Today will come an answer with the findings of the long-running inquiry chaired by Lord Savile. At the time, Martin McGuinness was a leading member of the IRA in Derry. He's now Northern Ireland's Deputy First Minister, and he has high expectations of today's report. What we require the citizens of this city, to a man and a woman, is for Savile to make it absolutely clear that the 27 people who were shot on that day, murdered and injured, were completely innocent people. Since the inquiry began 12 years ago, it has run up a bill of £191 million. Of that, a hundred million was in legal fees. The army have always insisted that they only started shooting after being fired at first. And some politicians believe the whole inquiry was a waste of time and money. Oh, I believe it was a huge mistake. It was a 200 million pound mistake. Because I don't believe there's going to be anything produced that we didn't already know. But the 5,000-page report will make a series of findings and recommendations. The long wait to find out what they are is nearly over. Mark Simpson, BBC News, Derry. Health officials have been blamed for failing to restrict an outbreak of E. coli at a children's farm in Surrey last summer. A report says the Health Protection Agency missed an opportunity to tackle the outbreak, which affected 93 people at Godston Farm. Some people suffered long-term health problems as a result of the outbreak. Well, our health correspondent Jane Hughes is in central London now. So what did the inquiry say should change as a result of all this? Well, the inquiry made it clear just how serious this outbreak was. 17 of those 93 people suffered serious, potentially life-threatening problems with their kidneys. And what it said is that there were problems in terms of people being able to have access to animals and have contact with animal dung and if that hadn't happened the outbreak might not have taken place at all and that there were unacceptable delays in dealing with the outbreak so what they're recommending is that officials need to act much more quickly when they hear that there may be cases of e coli 0157 coming from a farm and also that farms themselves need to make much more of an effort to make sure that visitors don't have contact with animal manure. What they're saying is that parents at the moment don't realise the risks they face when they take children onto farms. Hand washing alone is not adequate protection and they're saying parents should be told if they want to reduce the risks to the absolute minimum, they should stop their children touching animals altogether. What has Godston Farm had to say following this report? Well, this is the first time the farmers made a comment since all this happened. They've said they're very sorry for all the people who got ill at the farm and they now want to work with authorities to make farms safer. And the Health Protection Agency, which was criticised for its delays, has also apologised again. They apologised at the time and they've said they'll work with the relevant bodies to make sure this doesn't happen again. Okay. Sophie. Thank you very much. A British Marine has died in hospital in Britain after a gunfight with insurgents in Afghanistan on Sunday. He was serving with 40 commando in Sangin in Helmand province when he was injured. His family has been told. The vetting scheme for 9 million people working with children and vulnerable adults in England, Wales and Northern Ireland has been halted. The Home Secretary, Theresa May, says there will be a review of the scheme with a scaling back to common sense levels. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Andy Tai, reports. The walked off chatting away, seemed happy. Ian Huntley was a murdering paedophile. He was also a school caretaker. And the terrible murders of Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman in Soham ten years ago provoked a national outcry about dangerous individuals getting access to the young and vulnerable. The last government's response was to develop the most comprehensive child protection database in the world. Around 9.5 million people were expected to register. 
Now it's on hold, say ministers in the new government. If there have been, as there seem to be from the cacophony of voices, um, some barriers and some problems with the legislation, some unintended consequences, then it's quite right, as this coalition government promised, that we listen and bring it back to a common sense level. Under the gate and off out into the field. Today's announcement follows angry complaints from popular children's authors that the scheme created an atmosphere of suspicion and many teachers were also against it. For employers, it was a bureaucratic nightmare. So before any new employee could start, they had to go through all of the checks and the bureaucracy involved in that was horrendous. But one former Labour minister told me the scheme had already been modified and this was a knee-jerk reaction. The fact that they've ripped uh, the old scheme apart, I think, is a, leads to a very sad day for children and their parents. And unfortunately, a good day if you happen to be a predatory paedophile looking to get close to those children in an unvetted scheme. The government says it'll now come up with a less burdensome and more measured alternative. Though criminal record checks will continue and lists of banned individuals will be maintained. Andy Tai, BBC News. The latest inflation figures show a bigger than expected drop. The annual rate fell from 3.7% in April to 3.4% in May. One of the main factors was lower food prices, but the rate is still a long way above the Bank of England's 2% target. The recent fall in inflation has had an impact on Tesco sales figures. Excluding petrol and VAT, they have risen by just 0.1% in the UK over the last quarter. The firm said higher fuel prices, up about 30% from a year ago, meant shoppers had less to spend on other things. President Obama says the full force of the U.S. authorities will be used to compel BP to pay compensation claims quickly to the victims of the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. He will make a televised address this evening defending his handling of the disaster. Princes William and Harry are beginning their first joint overseas trip, visiting charities they support in southern Africa. Their six-day tour will include visits to Botswana, Lesotho and South Africa. Our Royal Correspondent Nicholas Witchell is travelling with them. It's a visit they've been planning for months and it's to one of their favourite destinations, Africa. William and Harry on their first joint overseas tour are visiting charity projects with which they're both associated and it clearly means a lot to them. The visit is starting here at the Mokolodi Nature Reserve in Botswana. William is patron of the Tusk Trust, which organises the education of local children in the importance of conservation. Then they're going on to Lesotho to see the work of Harry's charity, Centabale, which helps children whose parents have died as a result of the AIDS epidemic. Finally, to Cape Town to watch some World Cup football. William and Harry, with their informal style, their sense of commitment, doing what they can to help Africa. Our Royal Correspondent Nicholas Witchell reporting. That's it for now. I'll be back with the next news on BBC One at the later time of half past two after the World Cup coverage. Now, though, it's time to join our news teams where you are. Bye-bye. <laughs>